The first trace of Freemasonry in the Virgin Islands pointed towards England. In 1756, the Grand Lodge of England founded a lodge on St. Croix called St. George's Lodge. It was registered as number 224 in the Grand Lodge Register, but was changed to number 216 about 10 years later. In 1776, Brother Christian Ewald, on behalf of the Brethren on St. Croix, made an appearance through his mother lodge, Zorabel, to the North Star in Copenhagen to found a daughter lodge named to the Holy Cross. Ewald was named as the master and had to declare under oath that he would fulfill his obligations, particularly to the Scottish Grand Lodge in Copenhagen. The work was most likely done in German, as was the custom at the time in Denmark. The founding of To the Holy Cross had a devastating effect on the English Lodge St. George's because on April 29, 1780, King Christian VII signed a prescript to the leaders of Freemasons directing them that never and nowhere in any Danish land or possession should they recognize a foreign prince of royal blood as Grand Master or give any such authority or influence over the order. This prescript was enlarged in another royal document on November 2nd, 1792. The prescript gave Brother Ewald the opportunity to refuse the English Lodge St. George's number 216 the right to work. He tried, however, in vain to secure a charter from them from Denmark. St. George's worked in the dark for a few years, but officially struck its columns around 1785. It remained on the rolls until 1814, when it was erased. On December 3, 1785, another Danish lodge, St. Thomas to Unity, was founded on the island of St. Thomas. The founding of this lodge, the departure of Brother Ewald to Denmark, and the loss of the St. Thomas members who joined the new lodge caused to the Holy Cross to gradually decline and cease to work in 1787. St. Thomas to Unity also ceased to work in 1810 because of a lack of interest. It was revived in 1823, but ceased to work in 1835, and nothing more was heard about it. In the year 1877, another lodge, Eureka 605, was founded in Christiansted, St. Croix, under the jurisdiction of the Grand Lodge of Scotland. It is interesting that one of the founders, Brother Alex Henderson, police clerk and church warden, visited several lodges in Copenhagen. He was initiated in Union Lodge No. 2 under the Prince Hall Grand Lodge of Massachusetts in 1866. Eureka ceased to work in 1900. In 1795, an English lodge was founded on St. Thomas. Why this was done, no one knows. Because of the two prescripts issued in 1780 and again in 1792, this lodge was unable to initiate, pass, or raise anyone and ceased to exist in 1805. The Masons living on St. Thomas at the time of the union of the two Grand Lodges in England were a mixture of native and foreign-born. They were Jews, Gentiles, merchants, shopkeepers, clerks, seamen, civil servants, and planters. Those who had been made in lodges to the east and south of St. Thomas under the jurisdiction of one of the English Grand Lodges could not attend or affiliate with the Danish Lodges because of their racial and religious restrictions. The Danish Lodges would not allow either Jews or free college to join, even if they had been able to visit or join. They would have found it difficult to follow the ceremonies, which were either Danish, German, or French. The union of the two Grand Lodges of England gave the English-speaking Masons on St. Thomas the hope that they might at last receive a charter, which would last and be more permanent than all the others. In the year 1818, several meetings were held in the homes of various brethren, and finally it was agreed to apply to England for a charter. Why did the petitioners apply for a charter from the Grand Lodge of England with a prescript in place? There can be no doubt they consulted with Commandant Peter von Scholten on the prescript and were assured by him that there would be no more trouble. On April 12, 1819, the Brethren petitioned Commandant von Scholten for permission to establish a Freemason's Lodge on St. Thomas. The charter members of Harmonic were mostly merchants and some represented mercantile firms in England. It was decided that one of these firms could deliver the request for the charter. It is not known which firm was chosen or who represented it. There is, however, no doubt that the firm used by the St. Thomas Brethren was known by the firm owned by Right Worshipful Brother Isaac Lindo, past Senior Grand Warden of the United Grand Lodge of England. 
The petition was delivered to the Grand Secretary of the Grand Lodge by Right Worshipful Brother Lindo. On December 10th, 1818, the Grand Secretary forwarded to Right Worshipful Brother Lindo the warrant of constitution for the petitioning brethren in the island of St. Thomas, together with a book of constitutions. On December 11th, 1818, Right Worshipful Brother Isaac Lindo gave the warrant of constitution to the firm who represented the founders, and the constitution was sent by the next mail to St. Thomas. Right Worshipful Brother Isaac Lindo was born on Barbados about 1784. We do not have any information on when he left Barbados, but we do know that he was the first Grand Junior Warden of the United Grand Lodge of England. Probably being from the Caribbean gave him a special interest in the petition from the Brethren of St. Thomas. After a devastating setback in business, he left England around 1820, and we don't know anything about him until 1830 when he came to St. Thomas. His name appeared on the Rolls of Harmonic on February 21st, 1835. The members were so awed by the membership of such an illustrious mason, they elected him master, and he was installed on March 29th, 1835. Right Worshipful Brother Isaac Lindo passed away on August 15th, 1841, and is buried in the Jewish cemetery across from the Western Cemetery. The returns of March 27th, 1836 listed his age as 52 years. No one knows the first meeting place of Harmonic Lodge, but we do know that they met in private homes and taverns. The notes by some of the Lodge's historians record the first meeting place as Apollo Miller's Tavern on June 24, 1819. In 1846, there was a lot of discomfort in the Lodge due to a disagreement among the brethren, lack of attendance, and the blackballing of two candidates, Isaac Sasso and William Gomez. As a result, on February 12, 1846, the Worshipful Master Daniel Preto suspended all work. Years later, on August 4, 1851, 14 brethren met at Brother Wallow's home with Worshipful Brother Daniel Preto and decided to open an entered apprentices lodge. The only business was the election of officers. No one will ever be able to figure out why Worshipful Brother Preto was reselected. Three years later, Harmonic Lodge again ceased to work in February or May of 1854, due mainly to a lack of attendance and again the blackballing of two candidates. There was so much trouble that the members asked to be put under the District Grand Lodge of Trinidad. This worked for only a short time, and the brethren were again placed under the Grand Lodge of England. Another reorganizational meeting was held on January 10, 1857, at the home of Judah Cap at 22 Commandant Garda, and once again the brethren elected Worshipful Brother Preto as master. What is very odd about the whole affair is on both occasions, 1851 and 1857, Worshipful Brother Preto obligated and invested himself. In 1857, when the lodge was reopened, they rented a building at 1A Congens Garda, owned by a Mr. Lund, who later sold it to French Lodge Le Cour Sin City. In 1859, the lodge rented the building at 18 Congens Garda, now the Lieutenant Governor's office, for $65 a month. In 1873, the lodge again moved when the owner sold the property. This time, they went back to 1A Kongensgada. The brethren were tired of moving from one place to another and bought 10 Wimmelskelfsgada in 1874. They fixed it up and consecrated it as their temple on July 2nd, 1874. Harmonic Lodge has met there ever since. In 1887, Worshipful Brother James Jabez Warner, past Master Harmonic Lodge Number 356 in 1881 to 1882, and 1883 to 1884, became the founding master of Victoria Lodge, number 2196 in Barbados. Worshipful Brother Warner was originally born in Antigua. He became a mason in Scotia Lodge, number 65 in Bridgetown, Barbados. At the age of 26, he came to St. Thomas and became affiliated with Harmonic Lodge number 356 on December 7, 1877. He returned to Barbados in 1885 and was blackballed for membership in Albion Lodge number 196. A Masonic trial was held where it was determined that Worshipful Brother Warner was blackballed only on account of his color. The incident resulted in the formation of the Victoria Lodge number 2196 through the sponsorship of Harmonic Lodge number 356. From 1899 to 1906, the Harmonic Lodge suffered greatly from non-attendance. 
There were hardly any initiations and on several occasions visitors were called upon to occupy the chairs. During this time, at one meeting, there were only the master, two past masters, and four visitors. The Great Fire of 1831 probably destroyed most of the Harmonic Lodge records dating back to 1818. The 1916 hurricane destroyed some, and termites got in their licks. At the time of the 1916 hurricane, Harmonic had on its roles as Tyler and or serving brother, Sam Dunbavin, a carpenter by trade. The lodge suffered great damage and bro Sam went to work immediately restoring the roof. After 1917, when the U.S. Navy occupied the Virgin Islands, several enlisted men that were Masons came to the rescue and put in the ceiling in the temple and the banquet hall. One of the craftsmen was Brother William S. McGrath, brother-in-law of worshipful brother Desir M. Monsanto, P.A.G.D.C. From the date of the transfer until the Navy left the Virgin Islands in the 1930s, many Navy men who were Masons affiliated and many joined Harmonic Lodge. It was a great loss to the Harmonic when those brethren had to leave. In 1932, Harmonic was presented with a Bible from the Marine Brethren of the Military Lodge at Cherry Point, North Carolina. This Bible was stolen shortly before the fire of 1980. On February 1st, 1928, an emergency meeting was held at Harmonic Lodge to confer honorary membership to Brother Colonel Charles A. Lindbergh. At 11.15 a.m., Brother Lindbergh was escorted to the lodge by past masters, worshipful brother John N. Lightbourne, worshipful brother Dr. Nude Hansen, and brother W. O. Simmons. The master addressed the distinguished guest, presented him with the speech and a souvenir, which was a silver trowel with a gold handle. Suitably inscribed, Brother Lindbergh thanked the brethren. During the 1930s, Harmonic prospered and the excellent work continued. Outstanding masters were Brother Jacobs Robles, Worshipful Brother Orville Ken, Worshipful Brother Edwin Ellen Monsanto, Worshipful Brother Nude Hansen, and Worshipful Brother Morris de Castro. In the 1940s, the world was again engaged in a world war. The United States Navy returned and once again, Harmonic was filled with visitors and requests for membership. These were not happy times, however. The toasts to the casualties of war in the banquet hall were loud and clear. The 1970s were very productive for Harmonic Lodge. Quite a few new members were made and this generated a lot of interest in the craft in general and Harmonic Lodge in particular. My name is Worshipful Brother Aubrey Neltra. I'm a native of St. Thomas. I became a member of Harmonic Lodge 356 in February 1961. Uh, Harmonic Lodge 356 in the 60s and 70s affiliated very strongly with the Grand Lodge of Michigan and the Grand Lodge of Puerto Rico and also the Grand Lodge of New York. Those members used to come here on cruise ships every summer and with the Grand Lodge of Michigan, we became very close for over a period of 10 years. Uh, each year, we would, do, we would do a ceremony, and the following year, they would do it in their way. On January 3rd, 1980, through the carelessness of a burglar, our building was set on fire. The lodge met in the banquet hall downstairs for some months and moved into the partially completed temple to consecrate St. Ursula's Lodge number 8,952, on August 18, 1980. The money to rebuild came from all over, Masons and non-Masons, and the building was finally finished in January of 1981. I'm Worshipful Brother Sir Frederick Clarence Violet Jr., known to the Brethren as either Freddie or just Fred Violet Jr. I'm an attorney in St. Thomas. I've been a Mason the greater part of my life, and I love Harmonic Lodge. I've been asked to say a word about the fire that we had on or about 1980 up at Harmonic. It was truly a tragedy, a tragedy in several ways, and also we saw some exemplary behavior by one of our members, Gerald Rash, who went into the fire and pulled out our original charter from England. That was a hero's job. The tragedy was our wealth was in our stamp collection and it was a burglary that went wrong. The burglars didn't know anything about to the values to the stamps and they set our stamp collection on fire. 
As most of you might know, Hamonic was really a sea captain's lodge. And we had stamps in the downstairs storeroom from just about all over the world for about the last 150 years up to that time. And as I said, our major wealth was in stamps. That all went up in flames. Also, a lot of our history. Macon Berriman, who was our real historian, I assisted him. We managed to save a greater part of our records, and they were stored in the Kulianos property, actually the Silico property down the hill from us. With the rebuilding of Harmonic, we must thank someone who has gone unnoticed and out of our history, and that is Edith Woods, the wife of John Woods, who had an instrumental part in playing with the reproduction of the building itself and of the temple in particular. She by herself redid the ceiling to exact specifications, also worked with the architects and engineers as to getting everything that was in the building structurally to be re rebuilt. And I must say, she did a wonderful job. Also, she was able to get us a federal grant to assist in our rebuilding. And for that, I say thanks to the family of Edith Woods, which of course, you know, her husband was John Woods, and her son is the current master this year, celebrating our 200th anniversary, and I think it is quite fitting that he is our master for the 200th anniversary. In 1989, Harmonic Lodge 356EC was placed under the jurisdiction of the District Grand Lodge of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. Just a few months later in September, we were devastated by Hurricane Hugo, which did quite a bit of damage to the property. Unlike the fire of 1980 when we only had $25,000 of insurance, this time we had sufficient funds to restore the building. The Lodge building was restored just in time for the installation ceremony and meeting of the District Grand Lodge of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. I'm Worshipful Brother John Percy Woods, past District Senior Grand Warden in the District of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. I am presently the Worshipful Master of Harmonic Lodge number 356. I was initiated on October 19th, 1984, which is actually the anniversary date of the Lodge itself. I have also had the pleasure of serving as a Master of St. Thomas Lodge in 2000 to 2001. So my history with Harmonic is very long and I've been able through my ancestors to hear much about the history of this organization and learn much about it. Uh, from my father, Worshipful Brother John D.M. Woods, I learned about the founding of St. Ursula's Lodge, number 8952 in 1980. How in 1975, several brothers living in Tortola approached him and other members of Harmonic Lodge about sponsoring a lodge in Tortola. This was done and ready to be chartered in 1980. By a twist of fate, the person designated to be the charter master passed away suddenly and his immediate successor also experienced health issues. The third choice became a master or past master from Harmonic Lodge. That fell to my father, Worshipful Brother John D. M. Woods, and he along with several other committed Masons from Harmonic Lodge went for five years straight every meeting to make sure that lodge would be founded on firm ground and survive. That lodge is now one of the biggest lodges in the districts and one of the most profitable. 
In 1985, Masons living on Anguilla discussed with Worshipful Brother Gerald Rash the possibility of Harmonic sponsoring their request for a charter. We were very happy to do this, and on November 8, 1985, a large group of Masons from Harmonic, headed by our Worshipful Master Cyril Harrigan, attended the consecration of Unity Lodge, number 9166 EC. The consecration was performed by Right Worshipful Brother Dr. William Cooper, District Grand Master of the District Grand Lodge of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. I'm Rhys Hodge, a longtime member of Harmonic Lodge, the founding member, master of St. Thomas Lodge. I was a past assistant district grand master for the district grand lodge of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. I want to talk a little bit about um, St. Thomas Lodge and how that came about. Essentially, the Grand Lodge of England um, many years ago entered into a concordiate in which it agreed not to charter any new lodges on American soil. And for many years, uh, Harmonic having been uh, consecrated before the Virgin Islands became U.S. territory, um, pre-existed that Concordiat, and therefore we were not able to create a new English lodge in the Virgin Islands. Um, we tried many, many times, and after Harmonic entered the district of Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean. We again petitioned, and with the assistance of the district grand master, Dr. Cooper at the time, he interceded with London and got London to agree to consider granting it, but they would only do so if Puerto Rico, the Grand Lodge of Puerto Rico, agreed, because Puerto Rico had chartered Caribbean Light Lodge in St. Croix, uh, they thought it would be appropriate to have the Grand Lodge of Puerto Rico consent to the forming of a new English lodge in the Virgin Islands, on St. Thomas in particular. Luckily, uh, a few months before that, I was introduced to the District Grand Master, well, the Grand Master in Puerto Rico through a washful brother, Earl Lambert in St. Croix. He was an attorney and we were dealing with a legal issue. So when Grand Lodge required that we have permission from the Grand Lodge of Puerto Rico, it was very easy to uh, make that connection. And they readily agreed, put it in writing, uh, sent me a copy, which we promptly forwarded on to to London, and shortly thereafter, they agreed that we would be able to form a lodge. We picked the name, we got the petitioners, and it was approved, and the, grand, the lodge was consecrated on November 13th, 1998, so that this, this year will also be the 20th anniversary which would, together with the 200th anniversary of Harmonic Lodge, uh, will be celebrating almost uh, simultaneously. So I just wanted to basically uh, um, put that little bit of history. Uh, I was named and was the founding master of St. Thomas Lodge, and uh, Brother Leroy Machena, deceased was the senior warden and worship brother um, John P. Woods was the junior warden and the lodge created and it's just amazing that 20 years has gone by and, and, and it has continued to strive. Um, it was necessary to actually form a second lodge because harmonic membership was just so large that it would take forever uh, for a new member to come in and ever go through the chairs and rise to be the worshipful master. And the second lodge would actually be able to allow members to join 
and actually stay active rather than simply coming in and uh, not being able to progress or we'll just basically fall by the wayside and not not maintain the same interest. So it's hopeful that the second lodge will at least uh, be able to complement uh, harmonic and keep it uh, masonry going within the territory. So I just wanted to really congratulate Harmonic Lodge for actually reaching the milestone of 200 years. Uh, this past year, the Persian Islands, in a year-long celebration, celebrated 100 years of being uh, a U.S. territory, having been acquired from Denmark in 1917. And when you think of the emphasis on 100 years, to realize that Harmonic had been here for 200 years is certainly an accomplishment which I think uh, all related to Harmonic uh, should indeed be proud. So I congratulate all the members of Harmonic, all who have kept it going for these 200 years and hope that it will be around for another 200 years. Harmonic Lodge has a family tree that includes 13 other lodges in the district of Barbados in the Eastern Caribbean. Its direct sponsorship lodges include Victoria Lodge number 2196, St. Ursula's Lodge number 8952, Unity Lodge number 9166, and St. Thomas Lodge number 9679. Successive offspring lodges from those four lodges include St. Michael's Lodge number 2253, Caribe Lodge number 2829, Lodge St. George number 3072, St. George's Lodge number 3421, Union Lodge number 7551, Conception Lodge number 8346, Anguilla Masters Lodge number 9335, and Perceptor's Memorial Lodge number 9714. Having been a Mason for the past 34 years, I'm have been able to see quite a bit of change in history in the Lodge. Having seen the past generation that gave me the knowledge that I have now pass on. Uh, I've been able to see what the future can be for Harmonic Lodge number 356 as it completes its 200th year anniversary celebrations. This lodge, through the centuries, has gone up and down, as any organization with that type of history will it likely be. I'm pleased to say and encourage that the next generation of Masons in Harmonic Lodge are strong. And I see a bright future for this organization as it moves towards its 200th anniversary and onward. Thank you.